Hey folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today we are gonna be talking about a pair of products for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. We're gonna be talking about Xanthar's Guide to Everything. Excuse me, I mispronounced that. And there's a very pissy beholder who will come at me if I don't say it right. Xanathar's Guide to Everything and Xanathar's Lost Notes on Everything Else, which is a PDF supplement from the DMs Guild. I don't know the absolute canonicity of Xanathar's Lost Notes on Everything Else. Truly, I don't. Is this a vanity product? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't feel like it. But for those of you who are sticklers on only the books that Wizards has produ have produced for 5th edition, I don't know where you're going to fall on that one. I'm not even going to try to prognosticate that. That's for you to figure out. But I think it's a nice companion to this original book. What you have in Xanathar's Guide to Everything Else is essentially a lot of the Unearthed Arcana additional class paths that they have published digitally before. In point of fact, there are 59 pages of new additional class paths. Some of them are better than others. I'm not going to lie about that. Some of them are quite nice. Some of them are a little... Eh. One common complaint that I've heard and that I personally don't see as an issue is they still haven't fixed the ranger. I don't see the ranger as being all that broken. One particular subclass of it was the Beastmaster. And personally, I guess my response to that is, well, just don't do a Beastmaster or accept that it's not going to be as powerful and play it for thematic and role-playing purposes. But I get outshouted on that quite a bit. So as I mentioned, some of these new class paths are better than others. I particularly like the Rogue class path Scout, which sort of puts you squarely between a non-magic using Ranger and a Rogue, which I know is something a good friend of mine would like to, play, like to play and instead had to like outside modify his Rogue quite a bit to get there. There's some new Dungeon Master tools in here, which are nice, which are essentially more clarifications on rules, how to deal with falling, magical sleep, better ways to make traps, design encounters, etc., more stuff to do in your downtime. And finally, there are some additional race notes on the races themselves, etc. Do you need this book? Frankly, no. It's a nice addition, and I'm glad I own it. I think it will make some nice expansions for the next time I run Dungeons & Dragons. But I think that you don't absolutely need this. Now, as a follow-up to that, you've got Xanathar's Guide to Everything Else. With Xanathar's Guide to Everything Else, you get an additional 40 pages of new class paths. Class paths. That is extremely difficult to say. It's more. So honestly, I like more. I like the options it gives you. I don't like all of them. And unfortunately, I just got into a bit of a tiff with someone on the Dungeons and Dragons 5th Facebook page about I as a DM, I am perfectly willing to ban something in my game if I don't like it or I think it's game breaking. I don't think many of these are game breaking. In fact, a few of them feel a little underwhelming. One of my personal favorites though in the guide to everything and the lost notes on everything else is a new sorcerer uh, origin, a new sorcerer bloodline, which is Fey Magic, which essentially you are somehow descended from or have gained bloodline power from the Fey, which their most notable ability is whenever you gain or can replace a sorcerer spell, you can pick one from the druid spell list as well, and it counts perfectly fine for you. I think that's a very nice, it fits the theme, it works really nicely, and if you're playing an Oath of the Ancients Paladin, that's not a bad route for you to go whatsoever. There are some additional notes on how to deal with critical failures. If you want to include sanity and corruption into your game, critical injuries, how to deal with suspicion or people don't always trust your players, a couple new magic items. There's an interesting new character background here that I like quite a bit, which is called the Retired Adventurer, which was you're an adventurer for a while, and then you took an arrow in the knee, and then you retired, and now you're back in again. Which reminds me of something Patrick Rothfuss once said, or at least I was quoted that he said, which is he wants to see a female character, an older female character who gets into this for something other than revenge. Like, instead of my family was killed, now I've taken the oath of vengeance and I'll slay the bad doers. More along the lines of, you know, my kids are grown, my husband died of the plague, and I don't have anything else to do. I used to do this, so I'm going to do it again just for fun. My main problem with this, and it comes with almost all of the backgrounds, is a lot of these assume a certain level of experience that your average first, layer, first level player and first level character just isn't going to have. But that's where you are with it. It's just, it's, it's, not, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Finally, in this, there's an adventure set in Cholt, 
which serves as an additional springboard, if you wish, into the Tomb of Annihilation campaign. You need this about as much as you need Xanathar's Guide to Everything Else. Options are always good. I will never complain about having, well, okay. In a way, you can have too many options. However, I like to approach it like this. And I first mentioned this back in one of my reviews on the character arch the book of archetypes for All Flesh Must Be Eaten, where, the, where you can approach these archetypes or these class paths like you're in a pet store. And you go into a pet store and there are two kinds in here. One is the golden retriever. That is, wow, I like that. It's a popular choice. I'm going to go with that one. For the fighter paths, you might pick the samurai. For the monk, the kensai. Uh, Path of the blades for the bard. And then there are some oddball ones that you look at and go, what? but that's kind of your hot pink iguana where it won't appeal to absolutely everybody, but there's a few people that, oh my God, that is gonna rock their world. A lot of people may find the fey blooded sorcerer to be a little too, eh, for them. I personally love it. If you like monks and you wanna play an alcoholic, play the way of the drunken master. So, do you need this? It's nice to have options as long as it doesn't give you analysis paralysis. The nice thing is you have to make almost all of these decisions by third level, and then unless you multiclass the crap out of yourself, then it's pretty easy to follow on. For Game Geeks, I'm Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming. Do, 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 do.